What is Dollar Gujarati? How do Gujaratis do business? What kind of businesses can you do in America? How can you grow your business? How do you get your first customer? How can you raise funding? When should you be frugal? Can you start a business as an immigrant? Why is sales important? Where are all the investors? Which is the correct model for your startup? Find these answers and more in season 2 of Dollar Gujarati. Hey guys, welcome back to our new mini series Learning with Y Combinator. In this series, Gujarati Y Combinator founders take short lessons to teach us something tactical that we can use in our businesses or side hustles. If you have any particular questions or any particular topics that you want us to cover, write to us on dollar.gujarati at gmail.com. On today's episode, we have Nupur Mehta back again from season one of Dollar Gujarati. Hi, Nupur. Hello. So, Nupur is the founder of OTA Info. We'll let Nupur tell you what ODA Info is all about. But Nupur is a Y Combinator founder. And I would really urge you guys to check out her episode on season one as well. So hi, Nupur. Welcome back. And tell us what OTA Info is all about. And what are you going to teach us today? Sure. Happy to be back and super excited to see the progress that Dollar Gujarati has made um, from season one to season two. And as you mentioned, I'm the CEO and co-founder of OTA Info. We teach IoT devices stranger danger. So we make sure that your pacemaker doesn't get hacked, your car doesn't get hacked, and uh, it is smart enough to get the right information at the right time. So today we're going to talk about networking, networking 101, and how an extremely shy person became or gave a persona of being an extrovert and making meaningful connections that really help take the business to the next level. Yes, we do have some slides. I'm going to walk you guys through uh, my journey and how I learned the best practices. So about me, I moved from India to US in 2007. I was extremely shy to the point where talking to people was extremely hard for me. I started my first company in 2009 while I was still in high school. It didn't go anywhere because SATs got in the way. Then I took a leave of absence from USC to, you know, work on some crazy idea in my junior year of undergrad, got into YC in 2016 and started my third company, OTA Info, in 2020, February. Another crazy story. But today we are going to talk about, like, a lot of people ask me, where do I get started? There are so many opportunities out there. How do I narrow it down? How do I focus and make something out of nothing. So if you guys have always wondered if you have an idea that you're tinkering with, but don't know how to go about it, uh, how can networking be really helpful in getting you guys started? So first of all, when I started, I didn't know anything. So uh, I thought that if I met a lot of people who are really good at what they do, they will be able to help me. So I started going to every single conference I could possibly go to. I met some really cool people there. For example, I met the cast of the show Silicon Valley. By the way, very true. I met a team of pilots who were like uh, flying a solar air- airplane all over the world. I met, I met a bunch of cool people. For example, John Damon from Shark Tank, AKA co-founder of Fubu. I met the co-founder of Yahoo, Jerry Yang. I met the person behind Google Car who led the whole department. I met Steve Blank, who is the guru when it comes to anything startup. Um, I met Satya Nadella, although very briefly. I met Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce. I met Mark Benioff's mom. I met uh, Jack Dorsey, co-founder of Twitter and Square. I met Aaron Levy, co-founder of Box. I met Mark Zuckerberg twice. Fun fact, this picture was taken by an earlier version of Snap Spectacles, uh, Snapchat glasses, as some people might know them as. And um, Snapchat didn't own it there. Now it's very ironic because they're competitors. But what I realized very soon was that these are all vanity metrics. What I mean by that is it was cool to meet all of these people, but it was meeting people without an ask. 
I did not get anything out of it other than a cool picture and a cool brief conversation. And they didn't get any value out of it as well. So uh, once I realized that, I started having a lot more targeted exposures. And these are four success stories. The first one is Tom Riley. He's the CEO and co-founder of Cloudera, or at that time he was. And I snuck in backstage, met with him, did my elevator pitch moment. And lo and behold, he ended up mentioning not only me, but my company, he pitched my company on stage at one of the biggest conferences, Tycon. And least to say, this was one of the easiest events to network at. Next, I met Guy Kawasaki uh, after uh, we both attended Obama's uh, you know, talk and we had to go from location A to B and amazing 20 minute walk uh, with a lot of feedback still in touch with him. Next, I met Phil Libin, co-founder of Evernote. We ended up catching up over lunch afterwards and still in touch with him as well. He's one of the best mentors out there. Michael Seibel, CEO of Y Combinator, Social Cam, Twitch, and a lot more um, creative solutions. But uh, he ended up investing in our company as well. So what was so different about all four of these people that I had met? Why did not uh, the uh, earlier vanity metrics people convert to such amazing leads? Well, in this uh, four specific instances, there, were, there was a mutual benefit between both parties. It was the right time and the right place because a lot of time you might meet some cool people, but it might not just be the right time nor the place. Um, for the ask you might have. And we were both adding value and creating value by working together. So you might meet some cool people um, by cold messaging them. It might be an amazing brief conversation, but how do you really turn that into long-term relations and create value together? Well, let me show you a few examples. The most important thing is to have an extremely targeted exposure with a specific ask. How do you do that and on what platform? Well, there are many different ways to do this. First, let me tell you about the story about how we got into YC. We literally sent our pitch over Snapchat. Um, so the first screenshot that you guys see right over here is our chat with, with Justin. He's the co-founder of Twitch and Justin TV. Uh, he was very active on Snapchat at the time, again, research, and we cold messaged him with our pitch. He responded. We did not have any expectations and he ended up interviewing us, became our group partner, and we still continue that relationship until now. Second is a con uh, confluent co-founder and it was one very specific to the company we are running right now, OTA Info. I had done some research about who was relevant to the problem we were working on at that point. And uh, I followed her on Twitter and multiple other platforms. Saw her in person on California Avenue, perks of living in Silicon Valley and approached her continued that relationship online and we had an amazing conversation. Last but not least, I have parameters by which I narrow down the conferences I go to. But once I attend those conferences, I suck all of the information and contacts out of it. Um, and as you can see, it, is, it might be really hard to do it in person um, if the conference involves 100k people like RSA. And uh, so I turned to LinkedIn, sent very targeted messages, four simple lines. First is the ask, be upfront about it. Second, give them a little bit of context that might be enticing. Uh, like a dating profile, you're showing just a very brief overview. If they're interested and they swipe right, um, they can get a little bit more information. That's the third sentence. And last, um, make it easy for them. Ask them for 15 minutes. You do not want the first meeting to have all the information. It is more about how many impressions or how many times are you able to meet with them. 
and uh, just to show you guys the success uh, ratio of these four simple lines i've had over 90% success rate and this one is one of the most successful because if you look at the time set stamp i sent the message at 1 pm and within an hour we had a meeting and a location decided for that day so, so i have a question you... nupur okay uh, you're saying that we need to have uh, a specific ask ready beforehand rather than you know just going and randomly meeting famous people and clicking photos with them um so i'm guessing that this specific ask will be very related to what you need at that point in time for your business and i think it's very so once you have that figured out you will also you need to do your research on who are the people who can help you answer that question and then figure out which kind of social platforms or which kind of places do they frequent and right. then send them these messages on whatever medium they use right it could be twitter linkedin uh, snapchat or even in person or maybe you get their email id but it it helps to know what you want it helps mm-hmm. to know who can help you answer that it helps to know where that person is you know living on the internet and mm-hmm. uh, then you go through this you know four step uh, message where you are firstly you are saying what you want second you are saying okay uh, this is what i am doing third statement is to set the context and the fourth is to ask for a 15 minute chat or whatever it is make it easy for the other person to help you out remove got all it. the friction that is there got it yeah no that was perfectly summarized that's exactly <laughs> what my next slide is so i go a little bit more in depth about the research so as you uh, correctly mentioned you have to define a profile so what kind of person uh, are you targeting for um, sales or for your specific product uh, for example for uh, my startup ota info uh, we are looking for people who for whom the obtain standard is very important so i go to linkedin and i just type obtain right and what shows up are every single people every single person who is remotely related to obtain and uh, all it takes is i connect with them and do not forget to put in the personalized note that's what takes it to the next level um so figure out those keywords that are really important um to what you are doing and narrow down your search there are so many tools out there to help you with it linkedin sales navigator is amazing um so figure out what works for you and uh dial down on it second now that you have done all the research you have defined the uh, profile you have reached out to them they have responded to you to a certain degree now you have to set meetings um when you are setting meetings there is a etiquette um make sure that if you have used a platform like snapchat or linkedin you bring them to a email uh, or a crm bagged uh, service so you can track their opens and uh, really see their interest level um agree on a time send a calendar invite and if you can share a brief agenda because a lot of people who really want to bring value um really put in the work before the meeting as well so if you are able to send them a specific ask or you know this is what we're going to be talking about it gets their brain juices working um so they might be subconsciously thinking uh, about it throughout their day and once they see you it's a lot more serendipitous and always follow up over email so the day before your meeting to send a, a confirmation email looking forward to meeting you tomorrow if there are any collaterals send them their way um so just to make sure that both of you are equally vested in the meeting Uh, to create the most amount of value and do not forget to follow up so once you have had this amazing meeting um follow up with them because even though the first meeting might be 15 minutes again it's all about the impressions that you are making on people remember if at all if you take anything from this uh, 15 minute conversation remember that the goal of the first meeting is to get a second meeting so do not cram all your questions in this small meeting have a specific ask 
work in detail around that uh, and uh, it is all about relationships. So find a common ground and figure out a pace that works with both of you uh, to, uh, to help each other. Some people like to have a cadence where it's like, let's meet every two weeks and whatever problem you have, I will help you out with it. For B2B sales, it might be, you know, uh, moving through the funnel. Uh, it might take three months, six months, uh, a year, depending on who you're talking to. So figure out that pace and don't get frustrated because this relationship is long term. So keep yourself vested and know what's at stake. So lesson one was all about how do you cold message and create mutual values. But lesson two is how do you get there? So for example, if I'm doing customer development, I need to do a lot of interviews that might be 30, 40 minutes. So you define your own parameters in each one of these categories. And if I'm looking for career advancement or learning about new technologies, that might be more of a mentor mentorship session. Um, so 15 minutes might be enough. Uh, you might not need to meet, need to meet them in person. For B2B sales or B2C sales, um, you might need to create a sales funnel. And uh, that's literally, you might be the one you might be the one subconsciously guiding the whole process, but make it feel like it is very organic. So uh, different paths have different paths that you will need to follow. So figure out what your path is. First, figure out the profile. Second, figure out the uh, how will you get there. So building relationships and networking people is essential to every single thing that you will do in life, whether it is fixing your house or it relates to your business. You are always interacting with people. So uh, having a very targeted exposure and getting the most value to both parties involved is, is the crux of networking. So go out there, meet new people safely during COVID, network online and have fun. Thanks for listening to the show this week. And if you want to ask us any questions or want to see someone specific on our show, write to us at dollagujarati at gmail.com. You can also tweet to us at dollagujarati. Make sure you don't miss any episode by subscribing to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, or however it is that you get your podcast. I'm Daksha Shah, and you've been listening to Dollar Gujarat.